Hi guys, this is going to be the first video in a series of do-it-yourself videos. So what we're going to be doing here is making a 10 tub 28 quart rack. So what you're going to need is casters, which are going to be the wheels on the bottom, some uh, melamine veneer, which is just going to cover the edging so it looks nice, um, a drill bit that's the same size as these uh, wooden the dowel pins that are going to secure the in between the shelves and then uh, screws that are the proper size. These ones are uh, 1 and 5 eighths. So and then obviously you're going to need a thermostat. This is a Herbstat 1 basic. Uh, I'm going to do a review on that later. Uh, you're going to need your bins. So you're going to need your heat tape. I'm using 6 inch heat tape here. Um, I guess you could also use 3 inch, I just thought that the 6 inch would be better for, for these 28 quarts. And then you're going to need a um, an extension cord for however long. We're going to use the snaking method of attaching the different levels of heat tape in the shelves so they're all going to connect together so that there's only one plug. So then the one plug is going to plug into the thermostat. So I think that's just going to be a little bit easier than having, you know, five different plugs for the five shelves and I think it's just going to be better in the end. So you're also going to want to make some plans and a rough sketch to see how much wood you're going to need and what the dimensions of the pieces are going to be. So as you can see here we've made a rough sketch of the shelf of the rack. It's going to be five shelves high, two tubs deep or wide and there's going to be shelving or there's going to be dividers in between the two tubs on each shelf. And then we figured out based on the dimensions of the tubs how big we need to cut our pieces here. You can see those dimensions. And then we sketched out the two four by eight feet sheets of melamine and how we're going to cut those. Shaded areas are the waste wood so you, as you can see came out close to perfect for being the two sheets there. So now we're going to be making the uh, cuts on the wood. So first we're going to want to measure it out. After you make a couple measurements on how wide it's going to be, use a straight piece of wood or whatever whatever you have that's straight to make the uh, line. So here we finish cutting the different pieces for the snake rack. So we have here the dividers for the dividers for in between the tubs. They're going to fit on here like this. These are the shelves. As you can see, we've drilled the holes, put the dowel pins in, make sure they line up properly when you're drilling your holes. And then here we have the sides of the snake rack and then this is the back and the back's in three pieces it's not ideal but um, I was just using the rest of the scrap wood from the 4x8 sheet so I didn't have to buy another another sheet so it'll still work fine though and we're gonna use CDs as spacers so what you do is you just put CDs at each of the four corners and that way when we put the next shelf on there will be the perfect uh, distance between the tub in the shelf and it'll slide out easily but it won't be too big of a gap. So here it is uh, finished. Sorry I couldn't get a video of it while I was putting it together because I'm filming myself but uh, it uh, turned out pretty good. Um, I just put basically very simple like I said you put down the tubs uh, the CDs as spacers put that the little middle divider in there and then put the next shelf on and uh, then I just put four screws for each level I don't know that might have been a little overkill but better safe than sorry as you can see in the top here I kind of uh, 
miscalculated, it's a little bit shorter, so make sure your measurements are correct. And then also make sure that you don't have this happen where you put a screw too far up and it cracks it. So it's fine. I, I put more screws in to make sure it's stable, but it's just not going to look as nice. So then in the back here, you can see how these dividers don't run all the way to the back because this is where the heat tape's going to go, so you don't want it to be blocking the heat tape. So that's one part of this design. And then I put uh, the casters on. Very simple. I just flip the whole thing over, and then there's just four screws that go in. Um, I got the kind of casters that have the four screw points instead of the one that just has the pin. So very simple to put in and now it rolls around and everything so that's going to be a lot better for in the future. So now it's time to put the heat tape in. So first thing we did was cut these sections of the extension cord into we measured the distance between the heat tape on one level and the heat tape on the next level and then that's how we knew how big to cut these cords so and then we have the last part that we cut has the cord on it that's going to be coming off the upper level each of these cords is 20 inches long obviously it's going to depend on the distance between the shelves and so the next thing that we have to do is get the heat tape wired up so I'm using THG heat tape and it comes with these little um, circular things which is how you wire it up you crimp this onto the exposed wire when you strip the extension cord and then it's gonna slide into here and then you're gonna use I don't know if you can see the the uh, those crimps to, to keep it in place. So first thing you're going to do is put this here, set at the right distance, and mark it with a marker. Next, you're going to use the uh, a just a regular hole puncher. It's the right size, and you're going to punch a hole. So. It's going to end up looking like this. To do the snaking method of attaching all the cords together so it comes off one plug, you're going to want to strip this here, which is the coming from the first level of heat tape, and then you're going to strip the next one, and both of these are going to go to the second level. And I'll show you what that looks like in a minute. So we strip the wires here as you can see all you need is just enough to to pass through it but you don't want it to be sticking out the other side so now you can see we strip this one which is from the first level and then we strip this one which is gonna go here so both of these are gonna go together one in each now they're linked together so here you can see one thing to remember um, I use vice grips to clamp them make sure they're really tight because otherwise you're gonna be able to pull this off and that's not gonna be good once you once you actually put it in so you just make sure that it's tight and next thing is gonna be putting it in here and uh, crimping it down with those little uh, with these little things here there's two parts one that's they fit over each other so you get this one the bottom this one on the top and then you crimp it down so once you have them looking like that crimp down tight make sure they don't move then you just get some electrical tape on them so they look like that because these are going to be live now so here we have all five of them done. I just plugged them into the thermostat to make sure they're all working correctly, but you can see how they're 
all connected snake together. You also want to make sure that you have electrical tape on the ends here because uh, when you cut them the copper part is also exposed so just where the copper is make sure there's some electrical tape there too. So I've got the heat tape in place here and uh, as you can see I made these little notches here. You just need a chisel and just use a hammer and chisel them out. Fairly simple just so that the cords can fit in once we screw the back on and uh, other than that if your heat tapes wired up properly all you do is just put it in here and use some aluminum tape to secure it like this so we got the cords ran through the things there and we put uh, some electrical tape just to hold the hold them in place make it neater so now all we have to do is put the back on and the uh, melamine veneer so we've got the back on here and one thing I forgot to mention was that you're gonna wanna put your uh, hole for the probe to go through so uh, one thing to consider with that is that you're gonna want it near the middle of the rack so I put it on the third shelf down because uh, heat rises obviously so the top shelves are going to be a little bit warmer than the bottom ones so if you have it in the middle it'll keep them all more consistent than if you didn't so here it is finished um, I put the uh, melamine veneer on the edging I ran out so that's why it's not everywhere but where it is it's uh, it looks good. I mean, it's easy to put on. You can't really tell the difference that there's anything on there other than the melamine. Um, and it's working great. I mean, the only thing that's uh, a little bit of a problem is that the drawers are not sliding out so good. Because once I put the heat tape in, it made it a little bit uh, tighter in the back. So I would suggest, uh, if I were going to redo this, maybe, um, maybe put like two CDs as spacers in the back so that I can uh, just to make sure that it slides good but I mean they slide pretty good they're not like too tight but it's not perfect so there's my pewter so they work pretty good uh, thanks for watching